Good day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Alright, so Monday afternoon here in Australia and as suspected there's been a bit of a pullback. Now the overall market's still up just a fraction but this was 1.487 uh, and when I refreshed it it's down a little bit. But you know, market's still kind of holding steady but we need to remember that it's a public holiday over in the States so there is no uh, CME and all the rest of it until Tuesday which is almost kind of sort of Wednesday time for us here in Australia. But again, look, now it's a mixed bag. You know, we got some green, we got some red and things all over the place. Bitcoin dominance, 43%. So again, it's dropping. It was 45%, 46%, I think. ETH dominance rising a little bit and gas prices are super cheap. And some of the reason the gas prices are so cheap is because there's not a lot of, uh, or not, I won't say not a lot, not as much Ethereum mining going on at the moment, obviously with all the Chinese miners sort of having to move. And that's, you know, the same with the hash rate dropping severely in the Bitcoin uh, department as well. And look, it's affected a number of other coins because, you know, over in China, they weren't just mining Bitcoin, they were mining all sorts of things. So that has obviously played a part as well. All right, let's have a look. Bitcoin down a little bit. Again, it was up around sort of 35, getting close to 36-ish thousand sort of there. Ethereum, again, doing extremely well. You know, it was down at, I think, 1,800, 1,780, I think was its lowest point, and now up to 2,200. So not looking too bad. What's done well in the last 24 hours is what we want to have a look at. What's our best performers in the top 100? Holy moly. Synthetics Network jumping out the block. This got down to five dollars. Uh, I can't believe it made it all the way up to like I think nearly twenty-eight dollars uh, and dropped all the way down to five dollars. I did buy a little bit, a bit of this the other day. I think I got it at six dollars, but it wasn't a whole lot, and I'm still not, you know, kind of going crazy. I, I, I love Synthetics Network, one of my favorite platforms, but I'm just being careful in the altcoin space at the moment because again when we look at the bitcoin chart we can see it has turned around a little bit but you know nearly 20 percent for synthetics network compound Aave, the graph what are this what are these things and we got uniswap down here all sort of part of now the graph is a little bit DeFi. are we getting ready for the next DeFi pump I think we are. I think DeFi is going to go absolutely mental uh, in the next part of this year. Now, whether it's coming now or, you know, we're still three, four, five, six months away from it, who knows? But again, I, I believe DeFi really is the future of finance. And, you know, it's just trying to pick which ones that are going to, you know, have that long-term value because they're going to be a lot of flash in the pans. That's just the way it is. We come back in another four years' time and look, it may well be Synthetics Network. I don't think so. I think they're a long-term buy. But maybe they aren't here in another four years' time. So that is the tricky part, you know. It's easy to just get on them and ride them up and then cash out. You know, in a bull market, anyone can do that. But it's, you know, knowing whether to hold on to some of them because there's nothing worse than, again, maybe you bought Bitcoin at $8, you rode it all the way up to sort of $90 and then sold and made, you know, some mega bank and never bought back in again. And now you're looking at it going, God damn, I bought that for a few dollars and now it's worth $34,000. That is so tricky. All right, but again, you know, 20%, you know, getting up to 20% and then we're just in single digit sort of gains. But that is why... The market's only really up uh, ever so slightly, still under 1.5 trillion. What about losses? What's not done so well? Decred, I mean, losses aren't too bad, you know. Safe Moon, Titan Swap, Internet Computer, still sort of ranging. I mean, this, you know, the code review for Internet Computer was pretty decent on token metrics. And again, link down below if you want to join token metrics. I, I am a member of token. Uh, yeah, token metrics uh, and I use it somewhat sort of regularly depending on sort of what's going on in the market and so again internet computer was up around $400 and it was down at $33 just the other day so this may be I'm not saying it is but maybe a really good time to sort of get in if you if you missed it but look the losses very very minimal and again same with the gains they weren't sort of too crazy so really a kind of sideways trending market at the moment we have to wait and see what happens on Tuesday morning stateside time though. Give us a bit of a better indication. Let's have a look at Bitcoin. All right, so this is kind of the average where we've been. You know, it's been up and above here and this is a bit of both support and resistance. 
And what we could see is we have this rising wedge. Now rising wedges usually break to the downside, but not always. But what we can see is I said just yesterday that it was good that Bitcoin had finally broken out from this downwards trending line. So if we're on this side of it, it basically means it's bullish because we're no longer continuing to just be kind of held down by price. We had this fake out and it became resistance. It became resistance again, this line here, but we broke out from the downward trending and look what we've done. Came back and used it as support, set a higher low, higher low, but now we are getting a rejection already. So we are waiting to see what's gonna happen with this wedge. Are we gonna to continue to the upside or are we going to break back down? And again, even if we break back down, and come back down and you know touch this that is still bullish uh, sort of <laughs> i suppose i've got to be careful saying that we are still above this trending line and come back and bouncing off it still means we are in sort of bullish territory but if we come under it and we start to reject from it that really will just push us down low but again Really, we want to try and hope that we don't, you know, have any candle closes under this kind of thirty thousand dollar range, thirty one, thirty two thousand, thirty one and a half thousand. We can have wicks that go down below, but we definitely don't want any candle bodies. But it's something we need to keep in mind. But again, we still are ranging again between forty two thousand and sort of twenty eight ish thousand thereabouts. And again, that was set way back here. This is kind of where we were. And again, maybe you can raise that up to more, somewhere around about there, 29,000, 30,000, thereabouts. So sideways trending market. All right, let's move on. A couple of interesting stories. So the US SEC commissioner says Bitcoin ET, ETF approval is long overdue. So crypto mum, SEC commissioner Hester Pierce says that the regulator should have approved the Bitcoin exchange traded fund uh, in the US a long time ago. She emphasizes that it is not the SEC's job to approve or reject applications based on the merits of the underlying investment itself. People should make their own decisions whether to buy Bitcoin. Uh, totally agree, you can't wait for the government sometimes. They can drag their feet and do all sorts of stuff. You know, really ETFs are more for big business than sort of anything else. So really for the, you know, the everyday small investor, it's easier for us to just simply buy Bitcoin, you know, and simply hold on to it. Whether you do that in an exchange, hot wallet, cold wallet, that's, you know, up to you. And that, you know, that's exactly what I do. I buy Bitcoin on a pretty much sort of fortnightly basis. Uh, and again, you know, spread it around between a few different places. Leave some on the exchange, some on, uh, hot wallets and some on cold wallets and ledgers and all sorts of stuff. You never want it all in the one place, just in case something happens for whatever reason. But completely agree. I think it's probably long overdue, and I think that will probably really push the space uh, to the next level when it happens. It's just when is it going to happen? Hopefully sometime before the end of the year would be nice, but look, again, she says it's long overdue, so maybe we're still a long way away. All right. FinCEN names misuse of cryptocurrencies a national priority. So this is a, it's both good and bad. I mean, it's good that they're looking at this space. Uh, it could be bad, again, if they come in sort of too heavy handed and they stifle regulation. But we've got some other stories, uh, another story that will have a look at that. So the Financial Crimes Enforcement Network, or FinCEN, has named, has named cybercrime, including relevant cybersecurity and virtual currency considerations, as a national priority, which is good. They need to get that kind of stuff sorted and on top of it. In particular, the Treasury, the Treasury is concerned about the misuse of virtual assets that exploits and undermines the initiative potential. That's what I like that they're saying. So they see the potential in it, including through laundering of illicit, illicit proceeds. So this is the thing that I took. Their innovative, sorry, in the innovative potential. So it shows that they can see the upside. That's, that's the biggest part that I took out of this. Yes, we need regulation and all the rest of it, but they can actually see that this has potential to change things. We need some innovation. The financial space hasn't changed in nearly 100 years. Literally, hardly anything has changed in 100 years. We may as well be you know, still trading rocks and you know, things like that from way back in the day. Innovation is what we need for a free market and, and a world market. 
where if you want to buy you know something over in china or you know pakistan or wherever it doesn't matter where you're trying to send your money it doesn't have to go through a million different places and take weeks and days and there'd be exorbitant fees it should be just righty oh bang there you go three seconds later uh, money transferred and you know exchanged into whatever you know denomination they sort of want and then it's all done so i love that part that they don't want it to undermine the innovative potential love it all right this was very very interesting all right america's first legally recognized dow is finally here so a decentralized autonomous organization so the world finally has its first legal dow thanks to the development in the state of wyoming they're very progressive the American Crypto Fed DAO, an organization de dedicated to creating a monetary system resilient to, inf uh, sorry, resilient to fluctuations in value, received notice from the Wyoming Secretary of State's office that its, pro its project had been officially recognized as a DAO in the United States. So this is the first one ever. This is a major step for the project and decentralized governance initiatives. It shows that the US is open to recognizing organizations with innovative structures, even if they lack a centralized hierarchy. I think this really is the future. I think we're gonna get away from, you know, there's still gonna be some things that have to be centralized. It's just the, just the way it is. But I think we are going to a lead, a lean towards a decentralized uh, sort of world, pretty much. Again, there's still going to be some centralization. Like, you know, if you've got a leader of a country that's fairly centralized, that is going to be the way that it sort of is. Until maybe one day, you know, way, way in the future, there is a council, you know, like a world council. There's no specific kind of, you know, one country that's in charge. It'll be a whole stack of countries coming together, you know, making decisions for the world. That is, you know kind of pie in the sky stuff I suppose you know for my lifetime but I would say uh, you know way way into the future that's most likely how it will be uh, and it shows this is the first of its kind ever so you know the whole world is evolving and moving and as you know usual America seems to be leading the way uh, you know which is you know both good and bad depending on you know your point of view I, I like it uh, you know I think America does a lot of good stuff they're not perfect by any means and I'm happy to be Australian don't get me wrong but you know we all need to work towards a better world in general I think you know decentralization plays a part of that and I think cryptocurrencies plays a really big part of that as well all right Coinbase they've been plagued by complaints about their customer support like absolutely plagued people have you know, made so many complaints about it, and it seems they've listened. Coinbase has hired an army of support staff to keep customers happy. So I don't have a Coinbase account, you know, it's just not needed here in Australia. I use CoinSpot, and you can link down below for anyone who's from Australia. Uh, that's who I regularly use, and their customer service has been pretty good, uh, you know, at least for me, uh, whereas Coinbase, yeah, that's really been one of the stories is number one, they go down when prices are getting a little bit crazy all the time and there's been massive complaints about their customer support. So it seems that they've listened and they're starting to get on top. So good for anyone who's part of Coinbase. All right, last but not least, crypto asset manager Valkyrie has raised $10 million in a Series A round. A diverse cross-section of investors from the crypto sector participated in the raise, including Litecoin founder Charlie Lee. So the funding round also saw participation from XBTO, BTC Media, UTXO Management, Consolidated Training, and 10X Trading, sorry, and 10X Capital. Interestingly, former Major League Baseball pitcher CJ Wilson was also among the investors, as was Tron founder Justin Sun. Now you need to remember these kind of things don't get done if you're getting ready to go into this huge massive bear market these are all smart people and it's not that smart people can't ever be wrong but there's a whole lot of you know people putting a whole lot of money into this space a ton of money is going into this space what are the chances that we're going to go into some big massive bear winter not impossible totally possible but just highly unlikely. So it's that risk to reward. What's the probability that we're going to go into a big, massive uh, bear winter? Yeah, it's probably, you know, possible, 
not probable. What are the chances that we might travel sideways for a while and then start to pump up? That is more probable. Not, you know, guaranteed, but definitely on the more likely side. So again, that's why for me, I'll continue to invest until things are at new all-time highs. That's really when I'll stop putting money into something. It doesn't matter what coin it is. If it's going into price discovery, I'm not putting any more money into it. I'm looking to realistically start to take some profits. But until things are kind of, you know, getting close to their old all-time highs, then I'm happy to invest in them. Because it's not like you go, rightio, Bitcoin, as soon as it hits $64,000, well, I need to start taking money out. No, because it's probably got a whole lot further to run. You've got to make your decision at exactly when. But, you know, again, if maybe you bought at $10,000, starting to take, you know, profits at, you know, $62,000 probably wouldn't be a bad idea, but not everyone bought at, you know, $10,000. Not everyone could be so lucky. All right, look, that's it from me. Not a whole lot going on again. Excuse me, we're really waiting to see what happens when all the trading opens on Tuesday morning stateside time. That'll give us a bit better of an indication where things are at. But at the moment, I'm more than happy for crypto to just kind of travel sideways and not really do anything too crazy because it means I'm going to have more time to build my positions. Hopefully, and again, never financial advice, just personal opinion, you're doing something similar. All right, that's it from me. Stay safe, be kind to one another. Hopefully you're on that gain train. And I'll see you next time.